Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Tohami from Midway Simplicity and welcome to a new episode of the Midway Simplicity Show where I invite simple living advocates to share with you a few tips that are not too harsh for your lifestyle and that can help you simplify the five most important areas of your life which are time, health, things, finances and relationships. And today I have an awesome guest. She is Tammy Strubel from RowdyKittens.com and she is the tiny house enthusiast. You're probably <laughs> hearing about... I, I, I think people can see your house be, behind you. It's a tiny house on wheels that Tammy lives on uh, probably anywhere she would like to live. So welcome Tammy, it's an honor to have you on the call today. Oh, thanks for having me. I love it when, when you share blog posts that we are moving to this place tomorrow and we are moving to this place next month and, and we are living a very simple and people usually when, when simple living experts talk they, they usually talk about having like one bag to fit in all your stuff in so that this way mm -hmm. you'll be light and travel but you have also a house that, that is mobile house that you can take with you whenever you want. You would like yeah. to, to move. This is very interesting. <laughs> so share with us your story. How did it all start? Oh my gosh. Um, this all started in 2005. Um, at the time I was working in the investment management industry and I was really unhappy. I was commuting two hours a day. I had a lot of stuff. Um, and so my husband, Logan, suggested that we downsize our lives. And I was like, uh, I really don't want to downsize. I, you know, I wasn't on board at all. So we had a lot of conversations about the benefits of scaling back, like our living space, our stuff, our debt. And obviously, I caught on to the idea. Um, so it's been a slow and gradual process. Like... Um, we started out in 1,200 square feet, and now we live in our tiny house, which is 128 square feet. And like you were saying, it's on wheels. So it's kind of nice because we're actually moving on the 4th, and we're going back to Northern California to be closer to family. So anyways, um, that's kind of the, the short version of the story. That's awesome. So uh, so it, it's your husband who triggered this movement. and. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and and how did you transform to this tiny how because you know I run a blog about midway simplicity but when people see someone who lives in a tiny house like this this is a unique rare and not mainstream kind of, of house or lifestyle so can you share with us uh, how this can relate to people who are looking for midway simplicity sure well I I always tell people that, you know, not everyone wants to live in a tiny house and that's totally okay. I think, at least for me, like the goal of simplicity is to always kind of look at your own life and figure out what's enough. And that's going to look very different for someone with four kids, for example. They're probably going to need a bigger living space, right? But um, so, for example, my friend Christiana, she is downsizing from a 4,600 square foot house to a 1,400 square foot apartment. So that's a really big jump. But she kind of stepped back and asked herself that question question of like, well, what's enough? What do we really need? And they decided it wasn't a 400 or 4,600 square foot house. That's really big. But <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of, you know, simplicity can be complex, but I think the journey's worth it. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's all about the goal. Why do you want to simplify your life and how do you want your, your life to, to become or to look like? It's That's awesome. So uh, let's talk about time. How mm -hmm. this simple lifestyle that you have pursued helped you simplify your time? Do you have some tips to share with us to, to, to help people simplify their time? Well, so the first thing I did to kind of simplify my time is I tracked my time for a few weeks. And I basically printed out a calendar and I filled in everything I did throughout the day and throughout that week. And I was able to see gaps um, 
where I could, for example, work on writing instead of watch TV, you know, or maybe I could go out and exercise or spend time with friends or family. So I would encourage people to start tracking their time for a week or maybe two, and they'll get a better idea of what they're actually doing versus what they think they're doing. Because like, oh, I thought when I had the TV, I'm only watching TV like a few hours a week, and it was like five or six hours a week. So that's a lot of time that I could have used for other stuff. And not that TV's bad. I still watch TV and movies, but just not as much as I used to. Yeah. And what about health? Oh, gosh. Well, so we don't have cars. So that means I bike everywhere, which is great because I don't have like a... I go to the gym, but I use the gym to sit in the sauna. I don't work out there. I just sit in their sauna. But, uh, you know, it's basically like... I, I'm active all the time, and instead of driving, I, I bike, which is great. So you're saying that uh, living a simple life will automatically like, motivate you to uh, work out naturally. Use your body rather than using mm -hmm. artificial things or like, like your car or whatever. So when you move your body and living yeah, simply, you will get healthy. Yeah. 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 Totally. It doesn't have to be complex. You know, yeah. you don't have to pay a hundred dollars a month for a gym membership. You could go for a walk instead. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And what about things, positions? Uh, how to? Uh, do you have some tips about the? You know, maybe decluttering, downsizing, whatever. Sure. So, um, I. Like when I look back at all the stuff that I had, one of the easiest things for me, because like when I looked at all my stuff in my big apartment, I got really overwhelmed. So I started with one small section of my house at a time. So for example, one of the first things I tackled was my closet. And I had a huge kind of walk-in closet that was packed with clothes. And I probably only wore 20% of those clothes. So... It, over the course of a few weeks, I unloaded lots of clothes and I donated them to Goodwill. But it doesn't, it wasn't like a one day thing. It took time. So I would encourage people to really take small steps and look at their stuff and what they really need. Um, so that, I think that's kind of a less overwhelming way to get started by just focusing on one small area of your house. Yeah, the interesting thing about simplicity is that when you start the process, you will get addicted to it. You will want to mm -hmm. move on to the next thing and the next thing because you feel the beauty of the, the extra space and inner peace that you generate little by little. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and what about finances? Living in a tiny house, of course, means that you are saving a fortune. But uh, what else can you do to, to simplify your finances, maybe, maybe save more money and so on? Well, I think the biggest thing is to stay out of the mall. I know it's kind of like simple advice, but um, I don't, like I used to go to the mall all the time. Like the, uh, when I was in the investment management industry, there was an outlet mall near our office and I would go there all the time with my girlfriends and shop. And so... You know, I would be like, oh, I'll just go and I won't buy anything, but I always bought stuff. So one way to kind of kick that habit is just to not go and you'll save money automatically. <laughs> so that was that's something that worked for me in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting and I totally relate with, with what you're saying. And finally, relationships. And uh, I really w uh, want to know how your relatives, parents, and friends perceive the way you are living now in a tiny house. How can you, like, for example, make a party? How can you invite some guests to live or to stay for a few days with you? How are you dealing with, with, with other people when it comes to living in a tiny house like you are doing? Sure. Well, I will say, you know, when we started this process, my mom thought we were crazy and she was concerned. You know, I would probably be concerned, too, if I were a parent, like, what is my kid doing? But um, she's really happy for us now because we're happy. She sees that we're healthy. You know, we're debt free. We're doing what we love. Um, and we actually in our tiny house, we have a little pull out um, single bed. So if we have visitors, they can sleep there 
or we put people up at a really nice little hotel in downtown Portland. Um, and when the weather's nice, um, we can have like barbecues outside. But like during the winter, we kind of have a maximum in terms of who can actually fit in the mm -hmm. house for a dinner party. So the most we had during the winter was eight people in the tiny house. And it was really fun. So it's doable. Yeah. You just have to be creative. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is to simplify your relationships, you need to be yep. a little bit creative. Mm -hmm. This is your dog, yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's our neighbor's dog. They must really have cute. part in the conversation, I believe. Yeah, they're saying hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> or he, is, he has a point of view in, in what you're saying, agreeing right. or disagreeing. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to my question. So, uh, how do you think we can make our relationships more, uh, more simple? Well, I don't know necessarily if relationships are ever simple per se but I think you can make the time to really be present with people um, you know so if you're at a party for example like really like talk to the person like don't check your smartphone put it away you know what I'm saying like because um, I see that a lot like people kind of scroll through and I, I do it too and it's something I'm trying to break my habit of but like just really being present with people when you're spending time with them um, I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, so I and I will say too that you know my dad was really sick earlier this year and passed away, and I'm so sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it sucks, yeah. but it's yeah. how life goes. But the thing yeah. that's great is that I had the time to really be with him and help take care of him, and I'm really grateful that I had that opportunity. Whereas you know if I was still in the investment management industry, it would have been impossible for me to really be there to help him and my mom and so I think you know like going back to that kind of time tracking thing and figuring out like where you can incorporate more time for the people in your life is really a key thing mm. and now let's move to your awesome upcoming book <laughs> you can buy happiness the first person who can who say that in, in history, you can buy happiness, and not only that, and you're saying that it's cheap. You can buy happiness, and it's cheap. That is the title of your new book that is coming on September 18th. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the core idea of this book, and, and you know, how can we really buy happiness? Because everyone is saying happiness is from inside, comes from inside, it's nothing that you can buy or whatever. And you're saying you mm -hmm. can buy it and it's cheap, so tell us how. <laughs> sure. Well, so basically the book is about living simply and it also includes a lot of the latest happiness research as well. And so it was really interesting as I was researching the book and reading all the happiness studies that... Um, for example, Elizabeth Dunn, she's a leading researcher in this field, and she actually found that you can buy happiness. Like after your basic needs are met, so you have food, shelter, all that good stuff, and let's say you have disposable income, spending that money on experiences like going out to a dinner, having coffee, maybe investing in like a yoga membership, those are all things that will make you happier than just going to the mall and buying more stuff. And they found that the reason why the experiences make people happier is that you can constantly reflect on those things. So because of your memories, that brings you joy. Whereas with stuff, as humans, we adapt to new things really quickly. So like the new car you buy is really awesome for maybe a month, but then you're like, eh, it's just the car, you know? So um, that's kind of the gist of, of the research end of it. Um, and I talk a lot about that in the book. Yeah, and you talk uh, also about your journey and how, mm -hmm. how you both happen. So you think you both happiness and, and the, the currency was simplicity or were there other factors to that? Well, I think the main thread is definitely simplifying for sure and just being kind of more present in our lives and really focusing on our relationships versus stuff. Uh, that's been a really good thing for both of us. That's awesome. So Tammy, do you have 
like final words you would like to leave our audience with well i i would just say that um don't stress so much about stuff because in the end it, it really doesn't matter it's the people in your life that are really important um and i feel like for me particularly that lesson's really um been cemented this year after all my experiences with my dad and my mom and so um you know stay out of the mall and go hang out with your friends instead <laughs> yeah simplify your life associate or get close to the people who mean uh, a lot to you and just keep the things that you are proud to own and that will make you happy this is how you can yeah. buy happiness and this is how mm -hmm. it's cheap it's cheaper than the mall <laughs> definitely yeah. <laughs> Tammy, you are a great source of inspiration to me personally, and I believe you are a great source of inspiration to thousands of, of people from all over the world through your amazing photos that you are posting on your blog, through your inspirational writings, everything. And I believe your book will uh, take the world by storm and change <laughs> millions of lives. I believe so. Well, Thank you, you're very kind. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tammy, and I, I hope to have you again on another call to dig deeper into the topic of simplicity. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.